when the words are saying one thing, it's oftentimes in a person's face and an energy, you know, exchange of what they're what they're really going through and feeling. So that was kind of the work that Mikab and Elegance had to do. Hey there, this is The Awardist on Entertainment Weekly. I'm Dave Carger, and it's my pleasure to be here with the two stars of the beautiful movie, The Inspection, Jeremy Pope and Gabrielle Union, who's also an executive producer. Hello to you both, great to see you. Good to Hi. see you. First thing I have to say, is congratulations to you both on the nominations at the Spirit Awards. How cool that you're both nominated. I think that just really reflects your achievement together on this. So congratulations to you both. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'd be curious to know, Jeremy, I'll start with you and then Gab, I want you to answer the same question. Just what was your first reaction when you learned about this story, I mean, this this is your director, Elegance Bratton's story. What struck you when you first heard what this movie was going to portray? I fell in love with the words on the page and I fell in love with Elegance and I wanted to protect him. I knew that by him being so vulnerable and, and honest and telling his story and giving it away, um, that he would need, you know, some special people around him to kind of protect the, the integrity of the piece, the, 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 the emotionality of the piece. Um, and I wanted to be the person that the audience met before they got to elegance. You will tuck it in. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Have you been convicted of a felony? Are you communist? 60, 50, 40. Are you now, have you ever been a homosexual? No, sir. While I said yes early on and wanted to do it, it did take about nine months before I got the official yes to be able to go on the journey um, of playing French. And in that same time is when Gab reached out, slid into the DMs, and we were able to connect and kind of say, if you're making this movie, I want to be a part of it. Let's do it together. My first reaction to the, to the words were visceral, um, heartbreaking, heart, just the heartache, but ultimately very hopeful. And I just, I became addicted to the words. And then I was like, wait, this kind of feels familiar. And I realized I had read an, a New York Times article about elegance a bit before about pure kids and it had covered a bit of his of his backstory and i was like oh my gosh this is this, this man i read about and i'm like i'm gagging to work with this guy and i had taken a meeting with effie uh not too long before this and i was just like yo whatever you're doing i want to do like if i could just have you on every project and she's like okay say less everything came together um beautifully, but it started with the words. I kept coming back to them. I kept thinking about them. I kept, um, I couldn't shake it. We should tell people you mentioned Peer Kids. Peer Kids is Elegance's documentary that he made a few years ago that was very acclaimed, which I'm dying to see. Now that I love the inspection, I want to see what his documentary work is about. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. So, okay, Gab, so help me through this. My understanding is that initially you were just going to sign on as a producer and not be in the movie. How could you like read the script and not be like, not only am I gonna produce, but I'm playing Inez. Well, my slow self-esteem, it kicks in every so often. So as, a, as an executive producer, I start making my list. As I'm reading, I'm making a list of who I think should be, you know, these, these different characters. And when it came to Inez, I just literally didn't believe I had what it took or would be anyone else's choice. I never factored myself in at all. And then when they were like, no, we want you to be Inez, it was kind of a jolt to the system. And Elegance was just so confident that I could do it. And he instilled in me a level of confidence that I've never had in myself for my ability in this industry. Are you in trouble? No, I need my birth certificate. I need you to help me. I'm gonna be a Marine. <laughs> Marines. No you is gayer than two left shoes, and everybody can see it. And more than 50 have been wounded or injured in this attack, including several American servicemen who were on patrol there. This all I have left of the dream I held for you. So when you slid into the DMs, Jeremy's DMs, were you already on board as an actor or just as an EP? No, I was on board across the board um, on all of the things. And luckily, like when, you know, you make those mental lists, Jeremy is the list. Like there is no, <laughs> there was no number two. 
So we all had that, that in agreement. I was like, let me do what I do as a producer and slide into those DMs. And I was like, hey, homie, we've never <laughs> met before. I'm just a weird fan, but can we please do this together? And if you're on, you know, if you're in, I'm in, and we can let's go make some magic. So Jeremy, this was a full on offer. You didn't have to like read for it or anything. They were, I mean- I mean, listen I mean, fam, let's keep it 100. Like there were, <laughs> you know, I, things move the way that they need to move, you know? And I, I met with Elegance, we talked. It was just kind of this courting phase, if you will. So I didn't really know where I was come month two, month three, month four. But after nine months, you kind of go, well, they gave the job to somebody else. Just tell me that, you know what I mean? You know, I had my moments of, is it because I don't have the box office guarantee? I've never led a studio film. So are the all, you know, are there all these other business things that are in negotiation for if I can show up for this space or if someone will give me this opportunity. So I had to just kind of let it go um, and trust the universe will guide me and put me in the space I'm supposed to be in. So to make it full circle and go, oh, that feeling was right. I knew that I was supposed to do this. And I was supposed to work with Gab and I was supposed to work with Elegance from reading the script and now given the opportunity with a couple weeks in before we start filming, I then just took, you know, took it and ran with it and wanted to imbue the project with all that I had. Real question is, why do you want to be here? I want to be a Marine. That's not good enough. To be a good Marine means to know thyself and seek self-improvement. That means you get Hi, sir! They kicked you out, didn't they? My mom? She won't even talk to me. Most of my friends are dead or in jail. If I die in this uniform, I'm a hero. Somebody. How did the two of you and Elegance work together either before you arrived on set or once you were on set to create a backstory? Because, you know, things are alluded to in the script of the history that these two have, and it's been five years and, um, you know, it's there's an estrangement there. But how did you guys talk about it all in the context of this movie in, as, in the context of his story and in the context of the script that is presented? When they first approached me, his mom was alive. So it's it's playing someone that is alive and the mother of our director, writer, producer. Oh gosh, that's a big that's a big undertaking. And you know, four days after we got greenlit, you know, we were greenlit February fourteenth, twenty twenty. She passed on February eighteenth, twenty twenty. So then it's like, do you even want to tell this particular story? Are you comfortable? Are you healed enough? I mean, these, this is this is all happening in real time. We were working with, um, you know, at Elegance's pace. And he insisted that, you know, after a certain amount of time that he, that he had done, you know, the work to, to get to a place at least where we can make this and he can feel good about it and he can and be in a, a place of clarity and, and direct. And also separate French and Inez from Elegance and his mother um, and allow us to craft character versus doing a, 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 an exact imitation of their relationship. I still had to create a character because, you know, as much as I, I love my kids, I don't know if they'd be the most reliable narrators as to who who I am in my inner my in my the, the inner monologues that that, that that occupy my brain space. He gave me um, her Bible, some of her things, her clothes. I wore different pieces of her of her um, her wardrobe. But I had to get a sense of, of who who she was outside of elegance. Jeremy, how about you? Same same question, like the the kind of challenge of creating the backstory for French, but also for elegance. I asked him very early on, I said, because this is, this can get very complicated. And this, there's a world where this doesn't work being that you're my writer and you're my director and you're the source, but you have to trust me and you have to trust me to be the vessel and know that everything that you're telling me, I will use it to inform my best decisions, but I have to trust my instincts. And the only way that I can get to that place is knowing that the overseer of it trusts that I have the ability to have great instincts. So we had a conversation early on very much about like French, we're creating French, we're creating a version, you know, of your experiences, but French is separate. It doesn't, I'm not, he, I'm not you. There's no way that I could be you. And there's no way I'll ever fully know, but we can try to understand and try to get as close as we can to the honest truth. And I feel like you have the truth and then there's the truth. And that second truth is the truth that lies in our story and our objective and what our characters want. 
You know what I mean? So it was like, we have to best serve that as storytellers, as creatives. So we got to imbue it and put all of our pain and trauma and joy and love in this thing, ultimately serving the objective, um, which was this complicated relationship between French and his mother. And, you know, I think for me and Gab, then it became about how can we create longing and this tension with this relationship that only has few specific scenes. And they are, you know, paid is ripped out of things that have been directly said to elegant. So it was our job to find the emotional connection and, and that heart be underneath. Um, because the one thing that I think is important to, to mention is that elegance didn't hate his mother, never hated his mother. So there was like us trying to find that when the words are saying one thing, it's oftentimes in a person's face and an energy, you know, exchange of what they're what they're really going through and feeling. So that was kind of the work that me, Gab and elegance had to do. Vocab is supposed to break you down. Wanna go home? If we leave, they win. Why is this weapon your best friend recruit? Because it's the thing that protects the Marine to my left and to my right, sir. Jeremy, this is definitely one of those movies, I'm talking about the middle section now, kind of the whole, the boot camp section of the film, which is a large section. Uh, definitely one of these movies where I'm watching, like I would last two hours <laughs> and I would be out the door on a bus back to my life. And it's just so inspiring and mind blowing what Elegance and Ellis, your character, are able to handle. What goes through your mind in, in the playing of this? I mean, your mind must go there like, what what parts of this could I handle as Jeremy or not? The shower scene was was a bit triggering for me. Um, I had an experience. I was walking the streets of Harlem. Um, I was wearing a denim shirt with polka dots, and someone came and just punched me in my face, and didn't take anything from me. Just punched me. And I give you the context of me wearing this blue denim shirt because in my head that's the only reason, you know, that would have given a clue or to, of someone clocking something about me. And I remember looking around the the street and there were people that witnessed it, but no one came over to help me. Everyone just said, go home, go home. And what I do, I ran home. And it was this fear of like, what's going to happen? No one protecting me. So when we got to the shower scene and knowing that there was going to be this, this kind of incident that was happening, I, I felt very triggered by it. And how much do we need to show? How much beating do we need to allude to? Can we do it in a different way? Is there, you know, can we, make it a ballet where we don't, we're not emphasizing the violence, but it was just me, Jeremy, being very, very anxious and nervous about being that vulnerable because what happens is you put your body through this thing and what's not on the page is the screams and the grunts. But I started to pull and do these things that reminded me of something that was very traumatic and real. So he would call cut, but my body wouldn't know to cut it because it's like, I'm in this dark space and because elegance comes from a docu kind of place or had, he was used to just put a camera up and let's see what we get. But I said, for me, what's going to make me feel safe as an artist is us to have these fully realized conversations about what this moment is and what we want it to mean and to be and how that's going to be reflected on screen. And what would happen is a lot of times when we'd have those hour and a half rehearsals or whatever to really understand why we're doing this and what it's for, that informed the camera team, that informed my ensemble of actors, and then oftentimes we get it in one or two takes. To have those certain you know, personal parallels made it very challenging emotionally to show up um, and to continue to show up because we shot this movie in 19 days in the middle of Mississippi in a pandemic. So it was very ambitious of us to, to, to tell such a nuanced, vulnerable um, story and make sure that it was imbued with all that we could. Gab, the, the scenes that you share with Jeremy are all, I mean, they're all very intense. It, there's difficult things that are said. There's uh, difficult feelings that these characters have for each other. Can you take me back to the filming of those very emotional, intense moments and how you as an actor with Jeremy decided to kind of deal with each other and relate to each other on those days? We just connected very quickly. And immediately you see that Jeremy has this honorable soul that you just want to protect and nurture and cover. Elegance wasn't in Video Village. He was he was next to the camera and sometimes would be filming, right, himself. But I could I could hear and I could feel a child wanting his mother more than anything. I had to keep that in there. So you knew that when she's saying these things or the decision I made for Inez, 
it is coming from an excruciatingly dysfunctional place of love. And so that's where you, you almost feel like she's going to turn because in the moment I'm, I want to turn, I want to give French a different ending. I want to give Jeremy a different ending. I want to give elegance a different ending. And I want to give my own loved ones a different ending. I can only hope to be a realistic enough mirror for folks to see themselves and not like it and change course. I am never giving up on us. What is the bond that you will share with Jeremy in the years forward? He's just so painfully talented and he will have a piece of my heart and it will have nothing to do with his actual ability, but I have so much more respect for his love and his passion. That's what makes him him and he will have a place in my heart forever. And that same sense of protection, I don't want to be like weird and emotional, but it's a similar feeling than when I first met Michael K. Williams and obviously different actors, different journeys, they have the ability to reach in and grab pieces of your heart. And that if it's anything like with Mike, it's, it's everlasting. Talk to him probably more now than I did when he was alive. So it's, it's a similar connection that is a soul connection. Outside of my own kids, it, he just feels like there's a piece of me in him. That level of intensity and love and admiration and when I'm watching him, I'm just crying and cheering like a weirdo. It's a pleasure to see you both. I congratulate you again on these beautiful performances. For people who haven't seen the inspection, it is available on demand as of December 22nd. So it's easier to see than ever before. Uh, Jeremy Pope, Gabrielle Union, great to see you both. And thanks so much for taking some time. Thank you. Thank you for having us.